Welcome to this platform that we are on right now. To our guests, a very big welcome, and it's nice to see you here for the very first time. And to our family, welcome back. It's nice to see you again over here. Um, I just want to—I just hope everybody had a lovely week. This weather was amazing, and I just hope everybody had time just to enjoy it and to just celebrate this gift of life that God has given us. Um, if you could just do me a real quick favor and just share this link to as many people as you can so they can all come and be our guests and be part of our family and just enjoy this time of fellowship, this time of worship, and this time of this amazing word. So if you could just send this to as many people as you can and so that they can come and enjoy with us this morning. And right now, we're going to get into a time of praising our God. Oh my 
praise you and to worship you because you are worthy. Above everything else, Almighty God, we just want to thank you for how great you are. And we are here just to praise you and to worship you, Lord, Lord mighty God. Your heart and lead me in your love to the 
mighty God, you are worthy. You are mighty and you deserve all the honor and all the praise, mighty God. There is no one else, mighty God, who is worthy, who is fit, who is able, almighty God, for us to build our lives upon except you, almighty God. You, Father God, are our firm foundation. You are unmovable, mighty God, and there is nothing that's impossible with you, Jesus. We choose to build our lives on you, mighty God, for you are the greatest foundation that we can put our trust in, almighty God. We know that with you, almighty God, we can do anything, and we know that, almighty God, through you, Jehovah, we are able to be strong, to be firm, and almighty God, you are able to provide us with the peace, the comfort, the love that we need, mighty God. We build our lives on you, for you are worthy. There is no one else, Almighty God. And we just sing your name. We worship you, Almighty God. And we glorify you, Father, for you are worthy of all praises, Jesus. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my God. Thank you, worthy one. Thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, our provider. Thank you, our comforter. Thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, Lord of Lords. You are mighty and you are worthy of all praises. And we exalt you and we worship you, mighty God. For there is none other like you. There is none other beside you. We worship you, King of glory. And we thank you for all that you are doing and all who you are, Father God. You are mighty and you are worthy of all praises. And that's why we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And in this moment in time, I'd like to welcome Pastor Anderson Moyo. Good morning, Sheffield Community Church. What a, an amazing time to connect with you this morning. It's my honor and my privilege to be able to speak to you this morning. I would like to thank the leadership of the church for giving me the opportunity to be able to speak to you this morning and share with you a few thoughts that God has been downloading in my heart during this difficult period we've been all experiencing. So to this morning, the title of my message that I'm delivering to you is Realities of Faith at the Next Level. Realities of Faith at the Next Level. We are going to look at a story of a man that we mostly love and we mostly reference. 
to when we are preaching, and that's Abram. And so we are going to the book of Genesis. I will read from Genesis 12, verse 1 to 4. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. How I pray for the God that is its lent in our hearts. May it get to made full on good soil. And we pray for the God that it will bear fruit in our lives. And I pray that you use my lips to speak what you want to communicate this morning to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So what a wonderful year and what a year we have heard so far. I remember at the beginning of September last year, we received an invitation to move to the next level. We were taught about waiting, about how to wait upon the Lord. Our, comfort, um, our comfortable nests were shaken. We were put on the edge and placed in flying position because it was time to fly. Time to move to the next level. Time to shift gears and accelerate. Time to experience a view from the next level. Since then, it has been a year full of adventure. With the added uncertainty brought by COVID-19, an uninvited and unwelcome interrupter that has ravaged lives across the globe, forcing us all to stay at home and face the daily realities of our family lives. What a year it has been. I don't know about you, but for me, it has been a year and a half. During such times, Waiting upon the Lord became part of our individual encouragement for raising hope to keep moving despite the fear of sickness and possibly death on our doorsteps. And I think you should agree with me that wherever we are, every one of us, from the rich to the poor, the young to the old, from the south to the north, the east to the west, everybody is asking, are we there yet? Everybody, this has become a common question, are we there yet? Is the outbreak over yet? Is the lockdown over yet? But while this normal new clearly indicates that we are not yet there, in fact, there are some protocols we ought to abide with in order to stay, to remain safe from this pandemic. Indeed, our lifestyles have been transformed. You know, I'm a mother of three children. And usually when we are traveling on a long journey with my kids, you keep hearing them asking you, are we there yet, mom? Are we there yet, dad? How far do we still have to go? And from the scriptures we have just read, which tells us a story about a man whose life was transformed after he responded to God's call to move from Haran to a land he did not know. I would like to believe Abram also kept asking God the same question. Lord, am I there yet? As he journeyed from Haran to Canaan, a land he did not even have a map for. Only God was his navigation system. It must have been an adventurous journey, traveling without knowing where you're going. A land I will show you. But friends, that is the reality of a next level life. Learning to walk with God daily by faith as you join with him in this life. Learning to know his voice when he speaks. Or lest you will follow a detour. I believe we are all on a journey with God. And there are some lessons we can pick from Abram's life, his life journey with God that may help us to understand the realities of faith at the next level that enables Abraham to move from one level of faith to the next. So I'm going to share with you just four lessons on the realities of faith at the next level. The first lesson we see from Abraham's life is God uses imperfect people. 
Right from where we have read Genesis 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said to Abram. To me, that implies that it was not the first time that God was calling Abram. It was not the first time that God was telling Abram to leave his land, his family, his country, and go to a land that God was showing me, was showing him. Abraham was not a perfect man in that sense. He did not obey God at the first call. In fact, at some point, he was having long stopovers in Haran after he set out from A of the Chaldeans. He only left the, the Haran when his father, Terah, died. Not only that, at some point, he even lied that Sarah was his sister. He lied that twice to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he lied to Abimelech, the king of Jerah. As if you do think that's enough, Abraham also compromised to have a son through Hagar when, he, when his wife Sarah thought that, that God's promise was not to be, going to be possible to happen through her. So she advised him to, use, to, to, to have the promise done through Hagar. And he agreed, and yet the promise was given to him. So he compromised. So we can see there that Abraham had his flaws, yet he lived a next level life in Canaan. Yet he fulfilled God's assignment for his life and is known as the father of faith even to this day. We quote him, we reference him, we emulate his life. Friends, the secret was Abraham maintained a, cons a constant and consistent interaction with God who revealed himself to him many times, affirming his covenant with him. He built prayer altars to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. You know, you can say that, but just, that's just Abram. There are other men in the Bible that were not perfect. For example, Isaac, he also lied that Rebekah was his sister to Abimelech, the king of Gerah. People like Jacob, he was a trickster. He even tricked his, his brother's birthright. Moses, he was a murderer. He took laws into his hands and started wanting to justify the fight between an Egyptian and a Hebrew. David, he was an adulteress and even went on to connive to murder an innocent man, Uriah. Paul was a persecutor of the church. This, the list is long and we can't finish it in this session. All these men had imperfections. Yet, they experienced a next-level relationship with the Lord. My friends, you might be thinking, God cannot use a, a, a vessel of my kind. I'm, 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 I'm messed up. I'm a damaged goods. I don't know how you view yourself. But I would like you to understand this morning that the grace of God qualifies you despite your imperfection. As you continue to wait upon the Lord, he will raise you up to the level he wants you to be. He will give you the strength you need to face every each day's challenge, shaping you into the kind of vessel he wants you to be. Just build a prayer altar to the Lord. Concentrate in him. Have a place where you can concentrate on the Lord, where you can linger in his presence. Do not fall into the trap of justifying your weakness. You know, I messed up. There's nothing that I can do anymore. I've failed. I've, I'm a failure. Uh, it's, 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 I'm done. It's over. With me, I, God cannot clean a person like me. I advise you not to fall into the trap of justifying your weakness. Be like Isaiah who admitted how unworthy he was and allowed God to cleanse him. And he was put in a position when God worked in him, he was able to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Let God work in you. In fact, the fact that we are not seeing physically what he is doing does not mean he is not working. He is doing nothing. He is at work in you and in me. Remember, his grace is sufficient for you and me. It's more than enough. God always starts with an imperfect person and ends with a man or woman of faith. So it doesn't matter how and where you start from, but how you end. And you, if you, whatever you start with God, and whatever you allow God to start with you, he will bring it to completion. So I, I, I implore you this morning 
to let God use you, no matter your, your background. Let's look on to the reality number two of faith at the next level. Allow God to walk with you to your next level. Genesis 12, verse 2 to 3, that we have just read, we see God emphasizing and, 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 and affirming Abraham's assignment that he has given him. So we can see that the more Abraham walked with God, the more clarity he received from God about his covenant promises to him and his descendants. If you, if, if when you have the time, I would like you to read Genesis 13, verse 14 to 17, Genesis 15, verse 5, Genesis 17, verse 1 to 2, Genesis 22, verse 16 to 18. All those scriptures, God was bringing clarity on the assignment that he heard for Abraham and his descendants. The walk was not on a bed of roses, but it was possible because God, because Abraham allowed God to order his steps. God separated him from anyone and anything that was going to distract him from that assignment. For example, he was separated from his family and his country. He was separated from his nephew, Lot. He was even separated from his son, Ishmael. And after each separation, God revealed himself afresh and stated what he needed him to do. At one point, God told him, I want you to, to circumcise every male in your household. All your descendants, every male descendant in your family should be circumcised as a sign of the everlasting covenant with me. And that was Genesis 17, verse 9 to 13. So Abraham had to learn to trust and obey God every step he took. Church, what is it that God is separating you from so you can walk with him as he ushers you to your next level assignment? Who is your Lord? Who is your Ishmael? Which country, which family is God separating you from? Even Joseph. I know I love the story of Joseph. He, he really ministers to my life. Even him as well. He needed God to clarify what his dream was all about. Indeed, the Lord takes him, him into different valleys in Egypt until he was shaped into the goal that God had for him despite his attempt to take himself out of those fires. At one point, Joseph tried to talk to the cupbearer to go and advocate for him to, to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh that he, he was actually supposed to be, he was not supposed to be in the, in the dungeon. It was not fair that he was there. But you know, God being God, because the time was not yet for him to come out of that place, God just made the cupbearer forget about him until it was time that God wanted to, to take him out of the dungeon. Friends, the interpretation of our dreams can be far from what God has in plan for you and me. God has to take us into the valley and put us through the fires and floods to batter us into the shape of that assignment until we get to the point where he can trust us with the reality of that assignment. I encourage you not to try to escape out of the potter's hand. When you read Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to 6, you find God is, is really pleading with the Israelites that, can, I, can you not be like, can I not do with you what the potter does with the clay? He shapes it. He does, he molds it to the shape that he wants. Can you be like that in my hands? Allow God to put you on his will and shape you into the kind of vessel he wants you to be. A vessel that understands his will for your life and a vessel that is set apart for that assignment. So whatever assignment that God has for you, allow God to walk with you and bring clarity to that assignment. Reality of faith at the next level number three is next level assignment requires spiritual insight. Next level assignment requires spiritual insight. For this, I'll read Genesis 7 verse 8 and Genesis 13 verse 3 to 4. Genesis 12 verse 7 to 8 says, 
Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and, 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 and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Genesis 13, verse 3 and 4 reads, And he sent on his journey, and he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and I, to the place of the altar which he had built there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Next level assignment requires spiritual insight. You know, despite the struggle to see how becoming the father of the nation was going to happen physically, Abraham responded to God's call by building altars everywhere in Canaan. Literally, he littered the whole place with prayer altars in order to stay connected with the one who had given him the assignment. He had many places where he could call upon the Lord, the name of the Lord, meet up with him, worship him, linger in his presence, commune with him, and he understand the will of the Father for his assignment. He knew that apart from God, the assignment was unattainable because you know what? Sarah's womb was dead and only God had the power to revive Sarah's womb. So Abraham knew that if I'm going to be the father of the nation, I have to stick around the Lord. You know, a few weeks ago, we, we were taught that God's most wanted list is made up of all sorts of people, you and me. Implying that God can call you to a place where you will feel uncomfortable, you feel unfit, you feel unqualified, you feel even unwanted at some times, you feel rejected and persecuted. But guess what? It is still your assignment. Would you still accept the assignment? Would you still say, yes, Lord, here I am? You might be questioning how God will fulfill it through you, given your circumstance and situation. But remember, God is in the business of turning the ordinary to extraordinary and the natural to supernatural. Just to respond by building an altar to the Lord and ask him to give you spiritual insight so you can see beyond your physical, you can see beyond your limitations. We need to know that when Christ calls us to a next level ministry, his call requires us to die to self. You know, Paul understood that. And in Galatians 2 verse 20, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He understood that the call that was upon his life needed him to die to self and be crucified with Christ. So it's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about him. It's not about your idea. It's not your idea either. And it's not what you see. It's his plan, his perfect plan. And also, it has to be that way because all we do has to be for his glory and for his fame and for his honor. You know, David, after all that he did, he was able to understand this, and he said in Psalms 115, verse 1, Not unto us, not unto me, Lord, but unto you be all the glory and all the honor. May it be so with you and me that we'll be in a place when we have done all that God has called us to do, that we are able to say, Not unto us, not unto me, Lord, but unto you all the glory and all the honor. Reality of faith at the next level, number four. God will test your heart. God will test your heart. This is a moment we, most of us, we dread for. We like the glamour, but we don't like the pain that it comes with. God will test your heart. In Genesis 22, verse 1 to 2, I'll quickly read it. It says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abram and said to him, Abram, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moria and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. You know, God is 
always in the business of checking your heart to see if your heart is with the assignment or with him. You know, church, there's a difference with your heart being with God and your heart with being in, with an assignment. If your heart is with the assignment, there's a tendency of trying to do things using your own strength, using your own ideas. But if your heart, if you start from a point where your heart is with the one who has given you the assignment, whatever you do flows from that interaction. It flows from that communication. It flows from that lingering in his presence, that, 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 that talking and conversing with him daily. So he wants to see if your heart is devoted to him as you function at the next level of your life. So he tested Abraham in Genesis 22, as we've read, asking him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, whom he loved very much on a mountain, he would tell him in the region of Moria. Just at the time when they were enjoying seeing their son blossoming to be the man God had promised him to be. Just at a time when the noise of Hagar and Ishmael had been silenced for good, just when Sarah was enjoying being the mom God promised her to be, looking forward to her son bringing a young lady one day so the promise could be fulfilled. Just when all seemed like they had arrived at the next level, and then God spoke. I want your son as a burnt offering. You know, we like quoting Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, because it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to offer yourselves as living sacrifices. We are offering ourselves as living sacrifices, and not as a burnt offering. That's why we keep jumping out and in of the altar, because we are still living. But in this case, God said, I want Isaac as a burnt offering. What a request. You know, friends, such a request requires next level of faith that is based on the understanding that God is not a man that he should lie. No, is he a son of man that he should change his mind? Does he speak and not act? He fulfills his promises. Abraham had such faith, so he obeyed God's command even though he did not understand what God was up to. He laid Isaac on the, on the altar, lifted the knife ready to slaughter his son in Mount Moria. It takes faith at the next level to feel like you are losing everything you treasure the most and still hold on to your God. That's what we call next level faith. No wonder why Abraham is called the father of faith in the Bible. He passed the test of his heart because he did not withheld his son from the Lord, revealing the fear of God in his heart. He rested on the promises of God in his life during a difficult time. He understood that tasting times don't last, but tested people last to do next level exploits, exploits for their God. What is the church that God is asking you to lay on the altar in order to function at the next level? There will be a moment when your next level faith will be tested. Your next level commitment to God will be tested. Your next level relationship with God will be tested. Your next level prayer will be tested. There will be a moment. The fulfillment of your assignment is not just for you, but for his glory and the fulfillment of his perfect will. It requires sacrificing your only son, the seed of, for the great nation. It requires crucifying the fleshly desires and appetites and letting the spirit of God rule within you. Like Daniel who said, I resolve in my heart not to defile myself with the delicates from the king's table. It requires learning God's voice and ability to distinguish it from other voices. So you can become a portal of his presence wherever you are. Let's not settle for the light. Let's be ready and willing to let go of our Isaac. So we can have a view from the next level. As we conclude this message, I'd like you to reflect on the following questions. How have you responded to your next level assignment? If at all, you have understood your next level assignment. What are you doing to keep walking before him? To put him first in front of everything else? Have you established a place where you can encounter him, where you can linger and gaze upon his countenance? 
and develop a strong and deeper relationship with him. What is it that God is asking you to sacrifice? Who is your Isaac that God is calling you to bring to the altar? We need to totally recognize Jesus in all we do every moment of our next level life. Allow him to be in control. Wait for his timing. Do not run ahead of God. Do not try to help him. Submit completely to him. Friends, the reality of God's presence is not dependent on our being in a particular circumstance or place, but is only dependent on our determination to keep walking before the Lord continuously continuously and consistently spending time servicing our prayer altars abraham did it and he experienced a next level life and became what the lord called him to be the father of the nations jesus did that and he fulfilled the father's will for his life on earth since then he is he's enjoying a next level kingship and rulership seated at the right hand of the father highly exalted with a name above every other name, that all those that call to his name are saved. That's what we call a next level move that brings an increase in the kingdom of God. Church, let's embrace what the Lord is calling us to do at this next level. Refuse to operate at a lower or previous level life. Be a portal that, of, that God's presence can manifest. It is at the next level that we can understand the reality of total dependence on God. And you know what? It's worth the wait. So I'll just pray with you. Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for those that are saying, Lord, I do not even understand my next level assignment. Reveal to me. I pray for the God that you reveal the assignment to them. I pray for the God for those that are saying, Lord, I need you to walk with me through this assignment. I need clarity. I need to know the next step I should take. Oh, Father, I pray that may you reveal to them, may you order their steps. And for those that say, Lord, I'm messed up. I'm finished. I'm damaged goods. Father, may you reveal yourself as the gracious God, the one whose grace is enough to remove our imperfections. Lord, I pray for those that are saying, Father, I seem not to understand where you are taking me. I pray for spiritual insight. Lord, may you open the eyes to see beyond their limitations. May you open the eyes to see beyond the walls around them. May you open the eyes to see beyond the mountains around them. And may you open the eyes to see you as the God who is able to take them out of that and see beyond what you want them to do. Father, I pray, oh God, for those that you are at this place where you want them to, to offer their Isaacs to you the promise to you. Father God, that that at the moment of testing, Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you give them a heart that trusts in you, that they will put their trust in you and, and entrust you with their own Isaac, the only son, and allow you to bring back life, allow you to open their eyes to see the realm caught in the thicket, allow you and trust you that you who promised the made the promise you are not a man that you should lie neither are you a son of metal that you change your mind whatever you have spoken you fulfill whatever you have said you fulfill so lord i just want to pray for this every one of us that we may identify where we are with you in this next level walk and father that we may align ourselves with what you want to do in our lives in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen thank you church Thank you so much for that wonderful word, Mrs. Moya. You know, God is in the business of turning the ordinary into the extraordinary and turning the impossible into the possible. Like, what are the realities of your faith today? From what you've heard today, and are you working towards your next level assignment? These questions may have come up even as you're listening to the word, and even if it's even given you something or made you question your faith, like, do you want to give your life to Christ this morning? Have you given your life to Christ this morning? Are you working and walking with Christ this morning? 
And even if, if any of those questions is no, and you would want to give your life to Christ this morning, there are some numbers that are going to be on the screen that you can call and somebody will be there on the other end of the phone to answer your questions, to help you through this, and to be able to be with you even in this very difficult times that we're currently in at the moment. And if you want someone just to stand with you regarding anything that is happening in your life, again, the numbers that are going to be on the screen, you can contact them right now and someone will be there to hear you. You can also send us an email that will also be on the screen and someone will be there to respond to you and to be able to help you as much as we can do. And also, if you reside in any of in the Sheffield area and you require any sort of assistance, any sort of help, please also give us a call right now and also email us and we'll be able to help you as much as we can do with whatever problem that you may have. And at this point, straight after this message, we will be switching over to our Zoom for our MLC meeting. So do stick around and follow the links on them. So I'm just going to close off with a benediction. And it's going to come from 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 16. And it says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you the peace at all times and in every situation. And may the Lord be with you all. So thank you very much for tuning in this morning. Thank you very much for sharing this message. And we hope that we'll be able to see you again next week and have a wonderful week. Thank you.